Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here. Welcome back to the channel. And I am super amped because I just saw a video from a fellow YouTube content creator uh, entering into space that describes a new method, at least new to me method, of doing uh, Hubble palette HSO narrowband combinations to get really good color out of your narrowband sulfur 2 H alpha and oxygen 3 images. And for those who don't know, this is when we take a monochrome camera, we put um, filters in front of it of very specific colors that correspond to emitting wavelengths from emis emission nebulae. And then we take uh, three different colors and we map them to our R, G, and B to, to colorize a final image. It's a great process. It's very difficult to do. And I always, always struggle with the final colors and this new method uh, seems to be like really helping with this. So this is another tool available in our toolkit in addition to the standard Hubble palette to the um, HSO normalization by Bill Blanchon uh, script uh, or to the Forax uh, color combinations um, methods. So we have tons of methods and we're gonna see how well this one works on uh, an image that I took of the Horsehead Nebula. Now, I want to stress that for the full experience, you really want to go and have a watch on entering into space uh, video. It's awesome, he's very entertaining, and he's really a master at uh, at the curves part of PixInsight. I'll be doing a much less good job than he does. So really, I'll put the link uh, down up above, down in the description. Go and have a watch, it's amazing. And in his video, he goes through the whole process, starting from scratch, from the uh, from the image from scratch. I am do going to concentrate on just the uh, color part of the image um, using PixInsight. So uh, let's get to it. Here I am in PixInsight, and I have my H alpha, uh, sulfur two, and oxygen three. Uh, images of the um, Horsehead Nebula. The Oxygen 3 in particular is terrible. This is because I was using badder high-speed filters with my uh, Hyperstar C6 telescope. And at the time, the badder uh, Oxygen 3 filters were, the two of them that I received were defective. They were letting it very little O3 and a lot of light pollution. It was not great. Um, so, but anyway, we have those three images. And I've already done some quick pre-processing. I run, I ran Blur Exterminator on the H alpha and Sulfur 2. I um, I removed the stars. I also kept some stretched stars from H alpha after temporarily stretching H alpha, so I can place back white stars into the final image. I could also be just taking RGB star image and then putting those stars in. And I've also applied a noise extermination on all of the images. My next step was be to simply stretch them. I'm going to use the Easy Processing Suite, Easy Soft Stretch. This is a series of script that is available for PixInsight for free. I will put the link down in the description. It allows me to have like the same median background for all of my stretched images. I'm not sure how important it is for this particular technique, but it helps me kind of control the variables and make sure that we start with a relative same level of brightness for each of the images. And here we are. I have stretched my three images and now I can colorize them. So normally with the normal Hubble palette, what you do is you combine the images, you put um, sulfur 2 in red, H alpha in green, oxygen 3 in blue, you get an image that is super green. It's very difficult to, get, to then get the right Hubble palette colors. As I've seen, a lot of people end up just going to Photoshop to the final uh, color uh, equalization or manipulation. And I don't have Photoshop, I don't know how to use Photoshop, so I'm like always kind of stuck. This method does something a bit different. It starts with the black and white images, the monochrome images that we have here, and it colors them to the color that we want each of the image, uh, each of the band passes to have. So oxygen three, we want it to be blue in the final image, so we'll colorize it blue. Uh, sulfur two, we want to be it to be red yellow in the final image, so we'll color it red yellow. And H alpha, we want it to be gold in the final image, so we'll color it gold. <laughs> It's basically colorizing in advance before we combine the channels, and it's awesome. So before we can colorize, each of those uh, images are in the gray kind of uh, working space. So we want to tell PixInsight that those are going to be color images. So I'm just using uh, image, color spaces, convert to RGB images. And again, I'm really just following what um, Entering Into Space uh, did in his video, which I 
again, highly recommend going and have a watch. Anyway, let's start with Oxygen 3. So now the, all of our images on the RGB color space, and I can go and open the Curves Transformation tool. I'm in Curves Transformation, and because I'm going to open a preview, and because I want the image to be blue, well, I'm going to increase the blue curve. I'm going to decrease a little bit the green. I'm going to decrease the red a lot to remove the magenta until we get kind of a blue color. Now you notice that this would colorize the background as well. So I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to do uh, the curves transformation because I skipped a step uh, so that you see why this is important. I'm going to create a clone of my Oxygen 3 image and then we're going to create a mask from it. And I saw an interesting technique that was used uh, by entering into space to uh, to create the mask, which was to use the ACDNR uh, kind of uh, mask. I'm not sure whether this is going to uh, work. I've never done this before, but I'm just going to put lightness mask, preview, not apply anything, and, um, and just click the preview button. And you can see here, I can create a mask where the dark areas will be the areas where we apply the colors. So I can play with the mid-tones to make the darks darker. I can play with the shadows to make sure we don't include the background. And I can play with the highlights again to kind of make the, uh, the darks darker. And something like that maybe looks good. Oxygen 3 is like has very little signal because of the defective batter filter I was using. But I guess this is going to be good enough. Of course, the star halos will also get colorized, but that's the way of life. So I am going to apply this to my clone. Now we get a mask. I can apply the mask to the... Nope. I can apply the mask to the Oxygen 3 image. Now it's protecting the areas that we want to colorize. And so instead, we want to invert the mask so that we colorize these areas and we stop showing the mask. Now I can go back to my curves transformation, open a preview, and you can see now we're really colorizing only those areas. So I was playing with my blue and green and red, and we can also use the blue, the B, the B curve, which basically goes between yellow and blue, to try and uh, pull it down to get uh, an even bluer kind of, uh, kind of image. And uh, we can also play with the C curve to make it even more vibrant. Um, let's try something like that. I have no idea what the end result will be like. I'm really playing this on the fly, but boom. Okay, we have the blue image. Let's call it a day for now. Uh, I'm going to disable the mask. So we're going to uh, actually remove the mask. And let's go to Sulfur 2. Sulfur 2, we'll, we're going to do a mask just as before. Um, and so I can play with the mid-tones to really select the areas that I want to colorize. And something like this doesn't look bad to me, so I'm going to apply this. Of course, we could blur the masks as well. I'm just going to do, oops, I actually want to apply it to clone. So here we have a clone. I'll apply this to the clone. And as I was saying, we may want to blur the mask to remove noise, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to bother. Just want to see what the colorization looks like. So we apply the mask to the image. Uh, I am going to invert the mask, very important. And I'm going to stop showing the mask. And now we can go back to curves transformations. And here we are. I'm going to reset this. And so we want something that is reddish yellow. So I am going to start with the red curve here. So now it becomes redder. Uh, we can decrease the green and we can decrease the blue as well. So now we're getting like a yellowish, reddish kind of uh, tint. Let's play with the green a bit more so we can get like more red or more yellow kind of, um, kind of image. And we can also play with the B curve to kind of increase it a little bit to get that um, yellow red. And we can play with the C curve to make it a bit more vibrant. And maybe slightly more yellow. Yeah, this doesn't look bad. I kind of like those colors. And we can also go to, to the lightness component and yeah, increase it a little bit to make it less. Uh, I guess this looks okay. Okay, we're gonna try this for now. We could always go back to the colors and change them later on if we're not satisfied with the result once we, call, we combine the uh, images together. Now I'm going to do H-alpha. So H-alpha, we want it to be golden. 
So first, let's do the mask with ACDNR. And I'm going to play again with like midtones, shadows. I think we, we want to include a lot in H alpha, right? Because all of the, the image is H alpha. So something like that is it looks really nice, I think. So I'm going to not forget to make a clone of H alpha for the mask. We're going to apply this. We are going to apply the mask to the image. I'm going to invert the mask. I'm going to stop showing the mask. So exactly the same steps as before. And we're going to colorize this. So we're going to do something slightly similar than uh, sulfur 2, but we want to achieve like a golden kind of color. So increase the red. Maybe first I am going to decrease the blue. Okay, so now we get like a, a yellowish type of color. And uh, we can maybe play with the green a little bit like that. Play with the B to get um, a yellower color, something like this. And maybe for now, we're going to be less aggressive with the uh, with the blue. So let's apply this for for now. And now we can do another round where I'm going to uh, look at the preview, increase the red a little bit and the um, green will be increased to really start getting that yellow color. And I can do an S curve kind of thing, very slight S curve to um, to get like a bit more of that yellow and red so golden on one side, and then the gold kind of streaks out from the main area. And then we can take the blue, uh, pump it down even more, something like this. And let's see, can does the B component do anything? Eh, not much. I'll take the lightness component. And there, there, we're getting, we're getting that nice golden color, right? Yes, this is what I want to see. This looks good. So let's apply this. I think this looks like a good golden color. And uh, let's try to combine those images. So I am going to remove my mask. So all of the images have the mask removed. And we're going to go inside pixel mass. Mm -hmm. And in pixel mass, we want to not use a single RGB expression. We want to uh, put sulfur 2, so the image called S here, into the red. Into the green, we want to put H alpha. And into the blue, we want to put oxygen 3, so the image called O. And we want to create a new image in the RGB color space. And I'm just going to click on Apply. And this gives us those very interesting colors that I don't think I've seen on the Horsehead Nebula before. But I kind of really like that. Now, the magenta stars are a classic, right? So we're going to get rid of this with an invert uh, operation followed by SCNR. Bam, here we go. And I'm going to invert again. Okay, so this looks much better. And I really like those colors. This is super cool. Have you seen such colors on the Horsehead Nebula before? Ah, oh, this is so cool. Let's see if I get rid of a little bit of the green, what happens? You know what? I actually like that deep green. I like those colors. Let's go to Curves Transformation and see what happens if I, uh, let's say, increase the chroma. Ooh. I don't want to go overboard, but a little bit, maybe increase the uh, let's see what happens if we increase the contrast on the green. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, but this is fun to play with. Sorry, I need to open the preview. Oops. So maybe just the C component a bit of saturation and an, a standard kind of uh, S curve for the rest of the image to really make this pop out quite a bit. Oh man, oh man, this is delicious. Doesn't this look awesome? I don't know. I mean, I guess colors are, are to taste, right? But wow, that is a punchy horsehead nebula photo. This is super cool. Let me add the stars back to the image. So these are stars that are extracted from a pre-stretched H alpha. So they were um, unscreened. So we're going to go in pixel mass. And I'm just going to be doing um, tilde 
I'm going to call that uh, starless, oops, without the capitals because this is case sensitive. So uh, tilde starless times tilde stars. Yes, this looks good. Oops. Oh, I forgot the tilde. Tilde is here. And we've added back the uh, stars in the image. How amazing is this? I'm loving this. Let me have a look at how I had processed this image before. So this is how I had processed the image before. So then, and now this is the same image. In the end, it's all a matter of taste, but I kind of like what I see and I could be um, maybe playing a bit more with the channels, play, playing a bit more with the gold color, play, um, playing a bit more with the curves to get an even even better result or a result that is more to taste. Uh, but I really like what I'm seeing. I want to do a quick noise exterminator. Ooh, this is nice. And then maybe a last run of blur exterminator. Uh, where are you? Here you are. Uh, and maybe I'm not going to, I'm going to do uh, I don't want to sharpen the stars. And I guess this is uh, this is cool. This is a nice image. What do you guys think? What do you think of this technique? And again, like all thanks go to entering into space who was in inspired by apparently someone else, but it is beautiful. It is amazing. I really like what is the, the new available possibilities for us. So please go and leave me a comment down below about what you think about this technique, what you think about those colors, and what happens when you try to process your image, your images with this kind of, uh, of technique. I'll be very interested. Also, while you're going there, leave a like uh, or a dislike <laughs> and subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel, in which case, welcome. If you're feeling like you really want to support me, I have a link to my Patreon down in the description. You can also join the channel as a member. It helps a huge lot. It, and it helps me keep doing those videos. Thank you so much for to all of my supporters. It really makes the channel possible. And I also have like affiliate equipment links if you're planning on buying anything Astro or even non Astro related with uh, my links down below. But anyway, with that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.